I love summer squash, but you want to know what else loves squash? Bugs. So to keep from battling bugs and other problems, I started growing all my squash indoors. In this video, I'll show you exactly how I grow awesome hydroponic squash all year round. So to get started, I grow all my squash in Dutch buckets, but really any system that supports large plants will work just fine. Hydroponic squash will germinate in about 3 to 15 days, and they're normally ready for your first harvest within about 50 days. A daily light integral ranging from 25 to 30 will keep your squash plants happy and productive. I rate growing hydroponic squash as medium difficulty only because you need to pollinate, prune, and train the plants. Beyond that, it's incredibly easy to do. So viable squash seeds are going to germinate in 3 to 15 days, and you can speed up that germination process by soaking the seeds in water for a few hours before planting. I normally plant seeds in rapid rooter plugs because they're easy to use and they promote rapid root development. If you're interested in using them, there's a link in the description. Before planting the seeds in the seed plugs, I hydrate the plugs by soaking them in a weak nutrient solution for just a few seconds, just enough to get them wet. Speaking of nutrient solution, you'll want to start seeds in a nutrient solution with an electrical conductivity of 0.9 to 1.2 millisiemens. The solution needs to have a pH as close to 6.0 as possible. Once I've planted the seeds in the starter plugs, I put all the plugs in a starter tray. If you're using a similar method, make sure that there's enough nutrient solution in the tray to keep the bottom of the plugs wet. After this, I move the tray under a grow light and cover it with a humidity dome. Keep all the vents on the dome closed until the first seedlings emerge. I use a simple fluorescent grow light for all my seed starting. When the first two true leaves pop up, it's time to transplant the seedling into a hydroponic system. Start transplants in a hydroponic system with a nutrient solution between 1.2 and 1.8 millisiemens with a pH of 6.0. <laughs> I obviously did not follow my own transplanting advice as you see in the video. I started this plant before I had the Dutch bucket system ready, and then I had to go out of town for a week. By the time the system was ready, the plant was already starting to form flowers. I ended up having to cut the plant out of a grow down starter tray with a pair of sheet metal snips. The plastic on those trays is really thick and it's reinforced on the bottom. I finally got the plant removed from the starter tray with only minimal damage to the roots somehow. Luckily, plants are tough and forgiving. This plant didn't miss a beat, and it shot up like a rocket as soon as it was planted in the Dutch bucket system. Before transplanting seeds, do a test on the hydroponic system and make sure that everything works properly. You know, like make sure it pumps nutrient solution to where it needs to go. A week or so after transplanting, you can increase that nutrient solution to full strength. I've had really good results with an EC between 1.8 and 2.4 millisiemens, but keep the pH level at 6.0 throughout the entire grow. Since squash flower and fruit, you need a nutrient system that supports the different growth phases of the plant. General Hydroponics Flora Series is a three-part nutrient system that has worked really well for me and it's easy to use. All the Flora Series products have a feed chart on the bottle with suggested dosages for veg, flower, and fruit phases. Once the plant starts to put on fruit, go straight to the fruit phase dosage. So tap and well water have minerals in the water that elevate the EC of the overall solution. If you're using tap or well water, the dosing on the bottle is going to be a little too high. In this case, only add about half to three quarter of the recommended nutrient dose and then check the EC of the solution. If it's too low, add more nutrients. If it's too high, add more water. Squash need a lot of light, but it doesn't have to come from a super expensive grow light. For this squash in this video, I'm using a Viper Spectra P1000 grow light that I paid like 60 bucks for on Amazon. It's a dimmable, full spectrum grow light, and it puts out plenty of PPFD for growing squash. 
Adjust the height and intensity of the grow light until you're getting a daily light integral that ranges between 25 and 30 at the surface of the plant. If you don't know how to measure and calculate DLI, there's a link in the description of this video to an article that I wrote specifically about plant lighting. It's going to teach you everything you need to know. My normal grow light cycle is 14 hours on and 12 hours off, but you can adjust that as needed for your grow lights to get into that 25 to 30 DLI range. Just don't go below 12 hours on, 12 hours off. Sexing squash flowers is incredibly simple. Male flowers have a long stem and they look like a flower. Female flowers, on the other hand, look like a little bitty baby squash with a flower growing out the end of it. Unless you're keeping bees in the house, you're going to need to pollinate your squash by hand. You can pollinate female flowers with a Q-tip. To do it, you simply swab the anther, the inside of the male yes. flower, and coat the Q-tip with pollen. Then transfer that pollen to the female flower by gently rubbing the stigma, the inside of the female mm. flower, with that pollinated Q-tip. <laughs> or, if you prefer, you can cut the male flower off the plant, take all the petals off, and rub the anther, the pointy thing, directly on the stigma of the female flower. Squash plants get really long as they mature. Outdoors, you know, they sprawl all across the garden. Inside, it's a better idea if you can train them to go straight up a stake or a string. To do this, simply stand the squash plant up and tie it to the stake or string about every six to eight inches. I tied this plant up using twine, but if you're worried about hurting the plant, you can use nylon or whatever else you're comfortable with. These plants produce a lot of leaves, but in a hydroponic situation, we don't need all those leaves. Pruning the plant will increase airflow and direct more energy toward growing fruit. Wait to prune until after the first fruit has been harvested, then remove all but the first two sets of leaves below where you harvested the fruit. Continue this pruning process after each harvest to keep the plant from getting out of control. Most squash varieties have the best flavor when you harvest them before they reach 10 inches long. Normally, I try and harvest squash when they look like they're about 8 inches long. To harvest a squash, use a sharp knife or pruning scissors and carefully cut the base of the fruit about a quarter of an inch away from the main stock. Just be careful not to cut the main stock. So that's it. You're ready to grow hydroponic squash like a champ. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. If you've got questions, ask them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. Also, if there's a specific plant you'd like me to do a how-to video on, let me know in the comments. That's all I've got. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.